Christy Clark's lockout. 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 Perfect introduction for our legislature reporter, Omni BC's Kim Emerson, joining us. How are you? I'm doing very well. Excellent. I can't wait to hear the insider's view on this. BCTF President Jim Micker essentially painting Premier Christy Clark as the person responsible for this ramped up job action. Uh, predictable ta uh, tactic? Well, it, it is if you go back and look at when the cabinet was first introduced. Peter Fassbender's mandate letter. And just let me give you a couple of hints here. Number one, make sure the budget for BC stays balanced so they don't want lots of money going out the door. Successfully achieve a 10-year deal. They've since scaled that back to six, would still be the longest deal in BCTF history. And work with the Federation of Independent Schools Association, review and provide options for improvement and support educational choice for students and parents. In other words, let's push people to private schools and away from public schools. So is this a surprise that Jim Iker has come out and said this is Christy Clark's lockout? Not at all. Is it a good plan? It's always good to identify someone as the villain. And do you believe that Christy Clark is wearing that moniker now? Is, is Iker successful? Uh, not only on his own behalf is he uh, partially successful here, uh, the government is making it easier for him to paint it this way because you have to remember that there was the court case that came down the second time the government had been found wrong in implementing changes to class size and composition. And then you also had the words from that document coming out saying that the government had prov or tried to provoke a strike and was not bargaining in good faith. So that didn't sit well with the public looking at Christy Clark and what was going on. Going on there. So those issues, and now this latest one of the government promising to lock out teachers. Those things are not playing well with the public. The government does not look like the good guy here anymore at all. No, that's a fact. Okay, it's not often that a teacher's dispute with the province is resolved in a timely manner. How do you how, how long do you see this one dragging out? You know, the, this is anybody's guess at this point. In all the history of this type of collective bargaining with the BC Teachers Federation since 1994, the number of agreements that have been settled without the need for legislation, one in 2006. Other than that, MLAs have had to come back and do something to force teachers back into the classrooms. Now, partly this is the BCTF's fault. This isn't entirely the government's fault here. The BCTF has done this with various different governments, NDP and Liberal governments, and one of the reasons is they are unrealistic for the times in their expectations and demands. In this time, they're looking at wage increases about four times as much as anybody else in the public sector has been managed to achieve. So they're, they're intransigent on those kinds of things and that leads to these situations where legislation has to be brought in. So neither side is clean in this thing. Both sides are a little bit dirty and it's getting a little bit ugly and the people affected, kids, parents, graduation ceremonies, uh, marks for uh, end of school year. It, it's not a pretty thing at all. That's a difficult side is who this does ultimately affect. Now, if the union continues to escalate job action, which is really the expectation here, what might we see happen? Well, what you're going to see is uh, the, the union going to the Labor Relations Board to try and dispute the government's ability to take back 10% of their wages. Now, there is some history here. In 2011, they did the same thing when the government tried to take back uh, double digits as well. And the teachers were successful. The Labor Relations Board tossed the thing out and said, you know, you can't do that. So uh, they do have history of being successful on that part of it. But it's going to get worse before it gets better because both sides are really, really digging in their heels and it's not a pretty thing to watch and the saddest part of all is it is the students and the parents that are having to struggle having to find other ways for their kids to be taken care of within the community that's not the way it's supposed to work I feel for the young people who are graduating this year and might be profoundly affected but parents now should plan for long-term care options here right this is the one educational requirement that we're all getting out of this have a backup plan indeed Kim Emerson thank you so much as always, giving us sage advice and some good insights. Thanks for that.